It's BBC Radio Northampton. Enjoy the silence on the Wednesday afternoon. Uh, What's nearly 20 to 2 now on uh, Wednesday the 10th of July. Now, how many of you are listening to this very show on your mobile phone? Hello. How are you? Thank you for doing so. Good afternoon. Maybe you're on your DAB radio in your car. Uh, Maybe it's through your computer. Hello. How many would have thought that was even possible 20 years ago? If you've mourned the loss of the cassette tape, maybe the... um, the mini disc player, oh, still get emotional about that. It didn't last too long. The CD even is history for some people. Well, the Bluetooth cassette player is here. And it means that if you're so inclined, you can listen to your own mixtapes using the latest wireless technology. So you can physically get your old tapes, put it into this invention, which has come to market because of some crowdfunding, stick in your Bluetooth headphones and make it all work and operate. Is this a bit pointless or is this the changing world of technology? Now, Glynis Rowe is one of the directors. Glynis Rowe is one of the directors, I should say, of the Retro Bazaar, which actually focuses on things like this. First of all, Glynis, putting Bluetooth into technology such as cassette players has caught the eye of many people this week, but you've been doing things like this for a little while. Yeah, we've been um, doing Bluetooth and before that MP3 conversions on old radios and um, old speakers for about uh, eight years now. Why has this story caught so many hearts this week? Was it because we are so in love with the tape player? I think um, people are nostalgic anyway um, for the the 70s and the 80s and I think... um, as you say, with the mixtapes, a lot of people made their own music and that was the first opportunity to actually produce something that was, you know, a bit of your own personality. And the fact that you'd be able to bring back that back, I think that's why the Bluetooth cassette has kind of taken people's imagination. Glynis, you're absolutely right there. I-, I actually challenge anybody who's listening today to send me send me a couple of songs back to back, just suggestions, because I hear songs now on the radio, right? And no matter how many years has passed, I am almost expecting a different song to start after that song because yeah. it was the way it was in my cassette tape that I had taped either from the radio or from my brother's stuff. Yeah, and you knew every single word as well. <laughs> every single word. It was yeah. phenomenal. Uh, what's so good about retro technology and how are you able to make a business out of it? Well, what we do is um, we rescue and restore um, old radios. So... If you've got your grandmother's or your granddad's radio that's been sitting in a corner and you want to keep it because it's very sentimental, we can actually take that radio and actually make it sing again. So we'll utilize the existing speaker that's in it. We'll adapt it for Bluetooth. We'll hide it all inside and then you can just connect your phone to it. So you still get the look and the feel of the vintage piece. Um, but you get all the modern technology. So, and it's also, you know, keeping this stuff from falling into landfill and actually using old stuff and being very green at the same time. What's the most difficult part of trying to sort of repurpose a piece of old technology? Um, a lot of it is um, make sure that you, you get the, the parts that fit. Obviously, all speakers are different sizes, so you need something that fits into the into the radio or the speaker you're converting. Um, We also convert um, old old dial telephones to work on the new system, you know, the tone dialing. Mm. And so we have to fit fit the pieces into the existing phone because we don't want the outside to look any different. We still want it to look like an old phone or an old radio. This is class. The phone thing specifically has uh, has got my imagination. I don't know if you've ever seen the video on the internet where a dad hands his two sons the old um, winding dial phone and says, yeah. there's a number call that number, use that phone, go. Oh and no, I think it's, oh it's no. like a 13-minute video of these two kids cannot work out how to use it. But you do that as well, don't you? You can, you can repurpose them for a digital age. Yes, yes, that's right. So you can phone your bank on a, a 1920s candlestick phone, you know, like you'd see in Downton Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But so how are you able to make a business out of this? Is this popular? Yes, it is popular. We we sell all around the country at shows and we also sell online as well. And, um, you know, we, we do that as long as with, with other vintage tech. So we, we do, we restore lighting and um, other pieces, uh, record players and 
radiograms um, and we make them Bluetooth mm. as well. And so you were saying about it being green and you want to make sure that stuff doesn't go to landfill. Do you request people to lit- literally hand in or send in or sell, sell you their old technology? Yeah, we'll, we'll go around the country bu- buying their old uh, technology and we'll also, people will phone us up and say, look, I don't want it going to landfill. You can just have it. Can you use it? And we'll say yes, you know. Um, but obviously people are a bit more savvy that old things are worth stuff now between uh, bargain hunt and all the usual um, recycling programs that are on. So, yeah, I think it, it, it's definitely a vibe within the country anyway. What is the what is the thing that you see coming into your shop maybe once in a blue moon and you think to yourself, oh, that, that's what I've been looking for. That's, that's the thing that we can't get. It's incredibly rare. Um... Very early speakers, like 1920s and Bakelite speakers, and they were, they were round speakers and a lot of design, a lot of nice art deco design, and they're the ones that are very desirable. Um, people still love the deco look, and obviously with being made of Bakelite and very early plastics, a lot of them got broken, um, so very few survivors. So we love to work with the, the old Bakelite deco pieces, yeah. And because this new Bluetooth cassette player has come out, it's basically a cassette player, like the olden, the olden style Walkman. I think that was yeah. a Sony brand. This one isn't a Sony brand, so we don't want to mm. cross brands over specifically on the BBC. Mm. But with this coming back, how many people do you think have held on to their old cassettes and what's your experience within your market? Well, we, we actually um, still sell a lot of coll- uh, cassettes especially the blank ones if we can get them if we can get a hold of them they fly out and they go all around the world you know the blank cassettes so people are obviously still recording music and um and i think a lot of people will have hung on to them i know i've hung on to all my old cassettes and now i'll be able to use them again yeah what's your favorite cassette that you have at the moment i've got all the beatles on cassette oh <laughs> uh, the original cassettes Yes, the original cassettes. And yeah. do you mind? Do you mind if I ask you, Glynis? They're worth a few quid now, are they? They may be. I don't. I don't know. But uh, I, I bought them a very long time ago. Um, some of that, and some of the Pink Floyd, and obviously the early Madonna stuff. Yeah. Brilliant. And just before you go, can I ask you? Do we, as a society, and even the aging society, do we generally embrace technology as much as we should, or potentially is there a little gap left for us to maybe go even further with it? I still, we we do embrace technology. We obviously we mainly sell to the kind of twenty, thirty, forty year olds, but um, a lot of our customers are older because they they like the look of it. And I think I think you have to embrace the technology um, mm. because otherwise, um, you know, we'd be standing still. But it just proves people like to look back. They like they like the retro feel and the retro look. Brilliant. And uh, this is the best of both worlds, really. I'm genuinely really looking forward to maybe just getting my hand on a cassette player just once, just to play something in it. I don't think I've kept too many of my tapes, but I'll have a little look. Uh, that is Glynis Rowe, who's the co-director of the Retro Bazaar, which uh, sort of, can I say you retrofit your technology? Yeah, yeah, re- we refurbish and retrofit and um, restore and, and save the technology, yeah. It's in Milton Keynes. You can go and uh, have a little chat with them. I'm sure there are other retro st- stores available, but only one we can get our hands on today. <laughs> Glynis, thank you very much. Have a lovely day. No problem. You too. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Is there any in particular you'd like to bring back? Oh, the, still the mini disc player. Still.